Hi everybody, it's Meg Medina. I am outside um, on my deck in Virginia and it was just such a nice spring day. I thought I'm gonna come outside and record my answers to your questions. Um, even though there's like woodpeckers, you'll hear them and crows and school buses, there's gonna be a lot of noise, but you know, they're all happy spring sounds. So I hope you don't mind. I, I just wanted to be outside for a little while. Okay, so your questions. The first one, do I have any favorite books that I'd recommend to young readers and why? I think I have like a new favorite book every day that I read. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we're like in the golden age of children's books. There's a children's and teens book. There's just so much good stuff being written. So what I usually tell people is, I think you should just read as widely as you can. So let's say you love fantasy. That's great, read fantasy. Um, you know, Devour, Anne Ursu, Laura Ruby, you know, all those, those um, authors that really fill you. But take risks on other characters. Read contemporary fiction, uh, read a mystery, like stretch yourself. What I find usually is that when the book is really well written, it, it doesn't even matter what it is, whether it's something that I kind of like or don't. It's really about the characters, how excited I feel. So, you know, usually my advice is read what you love, but then challenge yourself and like read, 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 read outside of your comfort zone. Okay, second question. Um, some of your books have been challenged or censored in the past. Can you speak to that experience and what it's meant to you as a writer? Did it change the way you approach writing at all? So, hmm. so when you get censored, it usually means that um, a parent or a teacher or a librarian, usually a well-meaning adult, finds something that you've said in your book or a topic that you've written about in your book offensive or they feel that it's too too much for children to, to bear or read about. So that happened to me with this one, with Yaki Delgado Wants to Kick Your Ass because of the title. Um, and it's a book about bullying. And I don't know if you know any bullies, I hope not, but maybe you have met some in your life. That's probably the nicest thing they're gonna say to you, that word. They, you know, they usually have many more colorful words. So, you know, for me to have been censored for that book in terms of having it challenged and people want it removed from, you know, a reading list or whatever, it feels a little embarrassing, to be honest, at the beginning because the message is you've written something that's not good for children. What kind of person are you? Um, and so my answer is that the person, the kind of person that I am is a person who trusts um, children and young people and so I trust you to be able to read hard things that you see at school maybe and maybe you talk about them with your parents and maybe you don't but I trust you to be able to read those things and have ideas about them when you're reading and to ask yourself hard questions about them so I guess it hasn't really changed how I write it makes me having been censored I think just gave me the experience of, of being able to remind myself, I'm here for children. I'm here to ask the questions that sometimes they can't, or to, to ask and insist on talking about the things that adults maybe don't wanna talk about with them, that they want to talk about. Um, so I think in a weird way, it's made me stronger and a little more courageous. But it does feel weird when it first happens. I don't know, it feels like there's a lot of finger pointing at you. Okay, next question. So many of your books have won numerous awards. Do any stand out um, either for the award or for the book that was recognized? You know, that's hard to say because your books end up being like your kids, right? You love them for different reasons. So I think an award that, like, so, each award has this, a beautiful part about it, right? So the Ezra Jack Keats Award, which Diaisa won for, that's a book that I based on my aunt, Diaisa, who really did buy our first family car. 
but the award is for um, a writer who centers as the main character a person of color and I love that the Aisa is the main character in that book and I love that my first picture book you know that got this really fantastic award was about someone who I love very much and who would never have thought of herself as a hero in anybody's story but she was in mine and she was in this picture book so that was kind of cool um, I do love the Pura del Pre Award, mostly because the Pura del Pre is named after the first Afro-Latina librarian um, in Harlem and during the Renaissance, the Harlem Renaissance, which was like in the 1920s. And she looked out and she saw her students, right, the kids in the library, and then she looked at the kids who were in the books, on the pages of the books that she had for them, and they didn't match, and she spent her life really trying to make the library relevant to kids and to their lives, to find them books and materials that really spoke to their experience. So I feel so proud that Yaki Delgado and Mango Abuela and Me got that award because that award celebrates a book that um, honors the Latino experience and that feels cool. And then finally the Newberry for um, Merci I don't even know what to say about that. It's just shocking. It just, it's, it's so big. Um, you know, as a kid, I read books. I always look for the seal. As a mom, when I was finding books for my kids, I often started there. There are millions of great books that do not have the seal, but I did start there. And so it feels weird and exciting to know that my book is going to be in that company of books that we think of as really wonderful books for kids, so it's a huge honor. I don't know, I think each one of them has its own beauty. Okay, next question. You've said in other interviews uh -oh, that much of your writing is based on real life experiences or people you know. Is there one character that you relate to more than others? Is there one you wish you were more like? Mm. Okay, so I relate the most, I think, to Yaki, um, to Pity in Yaki Delgado Wants to Kick Your Ass because it was based so closely on an experience that I had in the seventh grade, not in the ninth, the way it is for um, Pity. But that feeling of being picked on and, and feeling like you're a loser and losing your way entirely because of bullying. Like that was a true experience that um, changed me in a really big way. Um, and so when I wrote her, I wrote her with a very raw, sentimental feeling for her. You know, like I really remembered what that felt like. If I could be like anybody, I don't know. I kind of wish I were like Stiller in my YA novel, Burn Baby Burn, because she says it like it is. She takes no prisoner and she's not going to suffer a fool. Even if you're her friend, she's going to tell you if she disagrees with you. And I love that. And I'm not often, always brave that way. I don't know if that happens for you, but sometimes I get, um, you know, I worry about being polite. I worry about not offending people. I worry about um, others to the point that I, I don't say what I'm really thinking. Do you hear my wind chimes? You see why I love being out here? Um, anyway, I wish I were like Stiller. I wish I had um, that sort of really tough sense inside of me sometimes. I'm thinking those things, but they don't come out of my mouth. And then I don't know, just because I love her, I'd love to be like Mercy. She's fun. She's got all kinds of self-doubts. She's, you know, clever. She's a little snarky. I know I like her. All right, let's see. How do you go about writing relatable characters for kids? And what do you see as your role in the conversation about representation in kids' literature? Okay, so relatability, I think, always comes back to being honest about people. So if, if you are writing, if you are writing a character, I think that the way that it connects with a kid is when the kid reads it and says, yep, that's me. That's what it feels like. So to do that, you have to tell the truth, the uncomfortable truths, the embarrassing truths, the really funny truths, the sad ones, all of them. So I think it takes some courage to do that. But that's mostly how I do it. I just 
I watch kids and I also go inside myself for who I was as a kid and I just really try to represent that exactly the way it is. Um, in terms of the larger conversation about representation in children's literature, that usually means like um, what my role is in terms of getting more Latino authors published and their work read, um, you know, Latino and, and folks from other marginalized communities. So my role has, I think, has been this. The first thing is that my job is to write the very best book that I can, right? Um, I do that. Ooh, the school bus is coming. You might see it coming by. Um, I write the very best book that I can. I also feel like because my books um, are picked up, because people do know my work, it's important for me to introduce other writers. I, I sometimes do that by bringing them to conferences with me. I invite them to, to do Q&As on my um, website. I try to, you know, signal boost on, on social media and stuff, their, their new books. I try to read them and highlight them and talk about them. Um, I can't write all the stories. There's not any author that can write all the stories, right? The pie is very big. So I think the job is to get more voices at the table, especially if you're a Latino, a Latinx writer or Latina writer like me. The fact is I'm writing one piece of the Latinx experience and it's a small one, right? There are all these different countries, all of these different perspectives. All of that has to be added in to to the literature so that we could see, you know, the full picture of a people. So I don't know, my job is to write the best book I can and, and help other people's work get seen and heard. Okay, how do you decide which challenging topics to tackle in your writing? Hmm, how do you make sure you write about them in an age appropriate manner? Okay, so I always ask myself this question, what was I afraid to ask when I was a kid? What hurt me as a kid? What helped me as a kid? And then I just use a lot of memory uh, in answering those questions about specific people, about specific events, about fights that I might have had with my friend, about adults in my family or in my world who were just terrible or wonderful, like what it was. And um, that's what I zero in on to to really identify what the really hard topic was. Um, writing age appropriately is hard, right? Because you can have a 13 year old who's really mature and you can have a 13 year old who's really young, right? And that's true for every age. So what I try to do is not say a 13 year old can or cannot read this. What I try to do is, is remind myself, as I'm writing, I say to myself, Typically, where are kids in this age, if I'm writing for somebody who's 12 or 10 or 13 or 17, right? Where are they? Um, how likely is it that this is the first time they're really encountering this topic with me? And then I try to be really conscious of that. I bring that to them honestly, but tactfully. Like I don't, um, I don't make it, let's say, unnecessarily violent or unnecessarily, you know, vicious in some other way. You know, I just try to respect where they are in their experience, their own lived experience as they come to this book with me. It's not always a perfect solution. I mean, some authors feel like I just write it and the kids can self-select out. If they, if they don't want to, if they feel like they can't read it, they won't. And that's, that sounds legit to me. But for me, I, I don't do it that way. In addition to deciding that yes, kids can self-select, I also write and, and more importantly, edit, thinking to myself, where are they? Where's my reader? What can I do to help them understand this in a way that respects them and loves them for exactly where they are right now? And that's it. 
All right, friends, that's it. Those are all the questions for me. Um, thanks for putting up with all the noise and everything else, and happy reading. Bye.